Yeah, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Uh, like I probably I will start this session in the next two minutes. Just hold on a minute. So I'm trying to share my screen. Uh, welcome to today's session on uh, our programming uh, and installation. Okay, so let's move on to our our programming. So our programming. So what's special in this R programming, man? Yes, R programming. It is free. That's awesome, man. So R programming is free of cost. It is used for statistical computing. So things like uh, the major problem with uh, the current trend, the major problem with the current technologies, current business strategies. The one thing which you have to understand is like we need a lot of historical data. Last year I have I made this much of business. So how much? What, what is the way of business I'm doing it today? So like the entire system is like it's towards like a mining concepts and data science. Sir, I couldn't understand, sir. You took almost two sessions of data science, but I couldn't match with the practical things, sir. Is it possible to match it with the practical things? Yes. So the real time scenario is real simple. You know, Prashant Kishore, that is the greatest person in political field. Prashant Kishore, IPAC. So he is a guy who took the like a background like a background statistical analysis for narendra modi to become a, like a gujarat cm for narendra modi like he is the guy working in the like a background to become a prime minister of india he is the guy who took the responsibility okay at present we got an election in tamil nadu and for uh, there is a greatest party dmk so ipac is the people they are taking care of uh, creating the strategy and they are using R programming and Python programming. But 99% they are using R programming. You may ask me, how come you know, sir? My student is working there in the company. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so like uh, the entire political field is defined and desired with the statistics. In this area, what kind of people are there? What kind of business the people are doing? What community people are there? We need that statistics to hit their mindset, to break the like, mindset, to make them to out. That's where your uh, R programming comes into the picture. Okay, over here. So the users is like statisticians, statisticians, data miners, everyone is using this one. And it came from yes programming the previous version of r programming is yes okay and it got a lot of lexical scoping semantics ah what is a lexical scope semantics sir it's nothing but look at uh, most of the people attending this particular program are professors so i guess so the professors knows about the compiler design concepts in the compiler design concepts we got seven different like uh, jargons among that we got the first area called lexical analysis from there you got syntax semantics intermediate code code generation and a lot of things are they okay lexical analysis like a cutting cutting or segregating the entire queries or your like a program into lex like into individual components for doing processing okay for doing a lot of passing techniques you got a left to right and right to left passing techniques right for the uh, maybe a top down or a bottom up passes can be achieved and these concepts are integrated with s programming they made a box that's called r programming yes now let's talk about the history of r programming so what is the history we are going to see yes so initial world in 1995 the great person ross ehalka and robert gentleman from the university of auckland new zealand the first letter of uh, rose ehalka is r and robert gentleman is r the language is r so from their first letter they termed it as r programming in 2000 they got the stable version of r programming 2020 it is the top most statistical software ranked ninth okay it is preferred software it's free of course so you will be using it let's talk about like where this r programming is used so 
sorry it's more where this R programming is used it is used for modeling See, I got enormous amount of data. I need to process the data. For processing the data, we need like, hey, how you want to process the data, man? I got a lot of students sitting, standing in Crescent College, sir. Sir, like, I want to like, hey, girls sit in the left, left tables and boys sit in the right tables. I got your segregation. On some basis, we need that models to be created. So that's why your modeling is very, very important to do a lot of predictions. So you got linear and non-linear. This guy, our programming works on linear and non-linear programming and modeling techniques. It is used in classical statistic test. Sir, I flip the coin, sir. Whether it's tail or head, which one is it? It will be desired. So you are able to predict it. So accept the null hypothesis. Of, so you got the critical value over here. What is the thing it should be done? And what is the thing should be done? So like a prediction or deciding what is the next step so a guy is hitting me whether i need to move left or whether i need to move right which is decided so your classical statistic analysis comes from the picture yes the next was time series analysis at nine o'clock my, my my temperature is this much at 9 15 i got the temperature of this much oh no that's, that's not a good example i got the gold gold rate which is really good for you okay, i got the gold gold like uh, 10 days before i got this rate nine days before rate eight days before rate seven days before rate six days five days three days two days oh what could be the day the rate by today any prediction by today afternoon, sir? Yes, it's possible. So maybe by tomorrow, what could be the rate cost, sir? Yes, we can predict it. That's how your time series analysis will flow. Based on the timing, we will be manipulating the statistics to find the future prediction. Yes, what else? Where there are our programming? Oh, let's have a consolidation report of our programming. So as I told you, like uh, our programming is used in linear or non-linear modeling techniques and it's used in classical statistical test it's used in time series analysis it's using classification classification what is a classification sir today afternoon you got the session on classification and clustering you'll enjoy the session that is one of my best session you are going to watch classification is like segregating segregating the data that is classification and clubbing the data that's called as clustering today after you got the session on this one on classification clustering uh, can you guys mute the system for a while so because i'm hearing some sound yeah it's disturbing me anyway like uh, let's talk about the data sets okay so like a like a, in in python i've told you about uh, the iris data set right so do we have the same kind of uh, data sets in r programming absolutely we got a similar kind of data set the same data sets iris data set is there in r programming also but i don't want to have the same data set i, I want to continue with the, some other data sets that's why like a car data set is available in built in R programming. So I'm going to use that uh, car data set in R programming to do a lot of processing. Okay, so here is the columns available. So miles per gallon, that is your MPG, number of cylinders, CYL, displacement in cubic inches. How much displacement? Gross horsepower, rear Axel ratio, real axle ratio, DRAT, weight, how much the car weight is, one by four quarter mile time, engine, is it a V-shaped engine or a straight engine, transmission, is an automatic transmission or a manual transmission, you got the forward gas or not, and number of carburetors, so these are the fields for a car, we'll be using this particular columns uh, to do some processing in our programming before going ahead like uh, let's talk about some statistical concepts 
this is going to be the real toughest area mathematics man <laughs> lot of mathematics maybe sir sir is attending this session like a, he, he insisted sir you didn't you didn't come up with a mathematical concept you people are going to die now <laughs> sir sir you like you like i'm i'm going to have a like a vague session for you on mathematics sir <laughs> let's start it the first one is like you should understand about the linear regression so what is this linear regression sir? see the data is like a segregator hey i want to consolidate it i want to make it in a straight line or something like that club it and group it in a similar manner man i don't want all the students standing like here and there standing in a straight line sir like the benches are there sir i can't stand in straight line hey wherever you can do it man so if over here i got a place you don't have a straight line here no problem cross line you can make it out right ah uh, come on come on join 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 yes you can do it so that is a linear regression so like creating or maintaining a, a, a grouping of people on some basis so maybe a loss that guy should move on some basis hey like i can tell like hey guys are you there yeah i'm standing here you stand like this man no 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 stand like this man no no stand like this man so based on your person i got 100 percent accuracy now but the rest of the people should move to make it a line behind me or next to me so how much the people are getting adjusted on what basis they have to get adjusted that is defined by linear regression in the minimal the in the minimal movement they have to align with me so that i can able to manipulate that is a linear regression okay the next one is a statistical terminology r square so r squared is a very important statistics like a, so see you are able to see here r squared like a, how much distance or how much movement you need to make to to align the data to align the data to group the data to cluster the data you are able to see r squared is 0 0.81 0 0.24 if i increase it increase it you are able to get the clustering of data proper in a proper manner maybe a, like a, yeah it's a clustering it's purely a clustering concept so by today afternoon you will have all the clustering and classification concepts for sure don't worry but here is the formulation for that yes the one like you should understand about the intercept concepts intercept is nothing but the, at the at what point i'm aligned to so like at what point i'm aligning to wink at what point i'm aligning to wink at at what point i'm aligning to wink it so at what point there is a specific axis at what point this axis is aligned sir like uh, yes guys can you align with me so that i i need to go that my intention is like i need to go out from the room the door is there okay how much you are aligning that is called as intercepting the point at which the the line is touching the axis maybe x or y axis that is called intercept you know about the coefficient coefficient is just a numerical number which is next to the variable that is called coefficient and you know the basic ones of mean and median average is called mean so summit and divided by seven is called mean median is the middle value the middle value is called a median mode is the number of occurrences two is occurring more two is occurring more and five is occurring more range is like the lowest and bottom value highest value differences is called range these are some of the mathematical concepts you must learn in data science world and we should understand about the residuals too sir you are asking me to stand in line with you we are ready but we have to move almost 10 meters sir Oh, 10 meter you should move to align with me ah that is called residuals the distance you need to make the every point need to adjust every point need to adjust to align to the like exact line or to make a linear format of data that is called residuals ah that is this is called quartile quartile is very very important concept in uh, like uh, our program in statistical world and the data science world you may ask me what is a quartile sir how much a ratio of data you are going to use hey you got 100 data give me some 25 data man that is called first quartile value cuts off the first 25 percent 
Mm, give me 50% of the data, second quartile, and this is your upper quartile, that is a 75%. Okay, segregating or filtering the data how much you want. That is called as quartile. That is called as quartile. Now you know about the variance. Over here, you call you got a lot of distance, that is called high variance, you got very less, that is called low variance. <sighs> Yes, let's move on to the practical part of our programming and installation. Uh, guys, are you with me? Yes, Can sir. someone talk? Yes, to sir. Me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you are able to see the screen and all right? Yes, sir. This is able. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move. Okay. Yeah, let's move on to our programming installation. So just go to Google, our programming download, you'll be getting this software. It's almost some 80 MB or something. So approximately 84 MB, I guess. Okay. Like, uh, so over here, download our programming. You are able to install our programming. Okay, the recent version is 4.0.2 is the version with the 84 MB. So you need to wait for a while to download the software. It's downloaded. Now I'm going to install this software. Like, uh, yes, I'm going to install it. Yes. On installing it, next. Just no no special things. And you should be really careful with the 32 bit or 46 bit because it will create a lot of problems. So like uh, you need to be, you should be careful with this one. So just click next, next, next. That's it. The R programming software is getting installed. You want uh, like a shortcut or not, you have to specify it. And the registry, like you want to store the registry or not, you can specify it. Once we give it automatically, the software is getting installed. Yes, it is getting installed. Sorry. Yeah, once if it is installed, like uh, just go to like uh, your computer and search for our programming. I didn't get it. Like over here, yes, I got it. This is your R programming. Once if you click this R programming, this is your R console. So R programming can be executed with the R console. This is a default environment given by R, like a R Studio itself. So the uh, R project that the exact owner itself, the proprietary people will be giving this particular software. And you can have R Studio. R Studio is another software, a geo interface to work with R programming. And third thing is that you can use Jupyter. Yesterday I told about Jupyter. The same software you can use it to install in R Studio and you can use R programming. Okay, so let's move on to the implementation part of R programming. Yes. Oh, I didn't change the font. Sorry for that. It should be in the white color. Yes, you can you just go to your R programming. Over here, you are able to see data of empty cars. Once if you give that one, you are able to see this is your empty cars is the actual. So empty cars. In the top, in the left side, you can see empty cars. So in R programming, if you type empty cars, automatically you are sorry for that sorry for the font and everything it should be behind like a sorry for that so like uh, it's, it's a, like i made a mistake in putting the like a watermark sorry for that okay anyway empty cars empty cars is the one like if you type it automatically you are able to see the data sets empty cars is a data sets and you are able to see all the columns and everything if you give the command data of empty cars Automatically, the empty cars of data is taken from this summary of empty cars. If you give summary of empty cars, automatically the data is, is segregated or grouped or clubbed as quartile. Hey, 25% analysis and give the data. So summary of data, summary of your part of the data is given. You can see summary of empty cars will try to give, yes, empty cars, this MPG, cylinder, displacement, everything is there. For each column, MPJ, cylinder, displacement, for each column, it will have the minimum value, median, mean, 
first quartile, third quartile, maximum value, everything. You'll be getting the summary of every column, the individual columns. Okay, so once if we get the data set, what are the things we can do with the data set, sir? So once we get the data set, we can do clustering, classification, creating the data frame, looping the data, fetching the top data, making summaries, a lot of things we can do. These are all called pre-processing and analysis in data science world. From there, we will be fitting and predicting and we'll be doing charting areas. That is the next world of the advanced data science. Okay, we got data science will have two different major fields. One is pre-processing the data and you'll be using for prediction the data. Okay, now I'm trying to do some pre-processing to show you what is the data available, what is the mean, median of individual columns. Oh, it looks bad, man. So I'm not supposed to have this one. Let me like just give me one minute of time. So if you got if you got any queries, just you can type it in the message box so that uh, at the end of the session I'll fix it for you, please. Yes, sorry for that. Yeah, over here, I, I got my, uh, the next one is like your uh, data frames. Yes, over here, like, yeah, sorry for that. So I, I changed for the next things and all, sorry for that. So like over here, like as I told you, empty cars, summary of empty cars, we have seen. Already we have seen the summary of empty cars we have seen. Uh, Manu, sir, are you able to see my screen and can you hear my voice? Yes, sir, audible, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so I removed the watermarks and all, sorry for that. Yeah, anyway, like over here, like uh, now let's talk about the string of empty cars, STR of empty cars uh, will have all the data in the, so I got the data, I got the data, right? I got the data for individual column. It is called as transposing, transposing, transposing in the sense, converting a row into data, pivoting. Technically, like uh, we will call the high, yeah, high technical key term is called as pivoting. Pivoting is nothing but yeah, transforming your row into your column. So STR of empty cars, STR of empty cars will convert for each column. The data is like this. Instead of having this data, I'm able to, this is called pivoting. Can you believe making a pivoting column with the database is the toughest thing. So like uh, maybe 10 years before I was working in Australia while working for Commonwealth Bank, uh, I have done minimum of 25 to 30 lines of code to make this concept. And in 2005, we got uh, 
I yeah, like uh, an inbuilt future of pivoting, but still we have typed almost six to seven lines, man. Oh, yo. And it is very tough to uh, control the data. But over here, STR of empty cars enough. The rows became a column. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. This is awesome. Seriously, I'm telling you. If you are implementing software things, you will be understanding the value of the, what I'm talking to you. Anyway, COL sums of is dot NA. Is dot NA is nothing but checking for the null value, not applicable value. So to find the null value, like we got the SQL query, like a is null or something like that. So we, we used to have like that. But over here in our programming to remove the null value. Once I am telling you, I'm not sure whether you people are researchers or not. Like I'm, I'm not sure about it, but this is a kind of a research we are doing. So removing the null values to do processing. We, uh, we can see like uh, over here, there is no null value in the columns looks good so check for any null value so looks good okay so this is a command called sums it's nothing but appending the data so it doesn't have any values so that is how like i got it so checking the null value okay so these are all coming in the pre-processing stage okay now uh, so this is dimensions dimensions nothing but uh, how much rows and columns are there so you got this much rows and 11 columns, I guess. So DIM, dimension of empty cars, will provide you 32 rows with 11 columns. Okay. Names of empty cars will give the future names. In Python, I'm telling you future names, right? The same thing you will be getting as names. So it will fetch you the columns. It will fetch you all the column names in your data sets yes so here is the columns and this dimension is providing 32 rows and 11 columns and the name of the columns are specified here yes let's play with the data sets now empty cars of 1 is to 5 comma so in python you'll be having the command called head h e a d head to get the topmost columns over here, I'm able to segregate it like a one is to five comma indicates give me the data from first row to the fifth row. Over here, like I got I got a command. So head off. You can see head off. So it got some data. So empty cars. Yes. Over here, you are able to see head of empty cars will be giving all the topmost rows and tail off will be giving the bottommost row if i want to specify it you can give the numbers also okay so one is to five comma will give the top five the rest is left off and it's a comma and if you give the values like this like i'm going to give the comma over there so leave the top five leave the top five and the rest of the things will be taken off one two three It's trying to take everything. It is repeated. Yes, it is repeated, I guess. So I'll check this one for you. So head of comma one is to five. I need to check it out. I'll get back to you on this. And head of empty cars data set will be getting the la first six data sets is taking off. You may ask me, sir, is it any like it's a standard count? It depends on the number of data. So I got thousand rows, sir. So obviously, head of the thousand rows will be at least it will have a minimum of twenty to thirty data sets, maybe to hundred data sets. So it will be defined. Okay, so it's not defined, and it is based on the number of data we got. And over here, tail of the empty cars will be providing the tail data to you. Okay, this is how your data sets are. So you are able to extract a specific data set to do some processing. Yeah, now I'm, I'm going to talk about the filtering the data. So I want to filter it, sir. I want a quantile of empty cars based on the weight, based on the weight column. I want to like segregate the data. In that case, you'll be using, you can see quantile of empty cars with the specific weight of the data weight 
weight column is there right weight column is there right for that using that weight column you just segregate it and show me a consolidated value okay quantile of empty cars of weight i'm combining 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 okay what is this a point for so 0 to 25 50 75 and it is like uh, it will it will try to find the mean of data okay it will and try to get the mean of data over here 20 percent 40 percent and 80 percent of data so it is like you are able to like a, like a extract the data based on your percentage a percentage okay so like in the previous one we have seen the count of data sir i want five data sir i want 10 data sir i want 15 data sir over here we can specify like i want 20 percent sir i can i want 30 percent sir we can specify like that using quantile like a, that is a keyword use quantile is a keyword used to extract the data and you can combine it yes so over here like i'm going to talk about the histogram charting of data sets so histogram is nothing but on a specific column i want to group it i want to give a chart 50 to 100 of how like a horsepower what is the frequency number of data number of data okay so number of data in this particular so based on the horsepower how much data is it okay so i'm trying to change the some other column histogram of what is histogram so most of you will know it it's like a, a, a charting concept so histogram is nothing but the, like a, the the count of value based on the count of a, accumulation of a value or sum of the count of the values based on that we are able to create a chart we can plot it that is your histogram okay so like i'm trying to like uh, create a histogram for mpg now we are going with the plotting concepts plotting the data okay so this is the plotting of values for the column for the column weight so based on the density density of empty cars of weight i'm trying to plot it over here i'm trying to create a table for that so for a gear for the column gear i'm trying to create the table so 3 4 15 3 got 15 like uh, data sets and i'm trying to plot it also so three the, uh, the number of gears for the cars so three three is the number of gear it got a lot of cars 15 cars got three gear and uh, like uh, 12 cars got four gear and five cars got five gear okay this is how sorry like uh, the presentation is too fast the reason is like uh, uh, since uh, since i need to embed this one in my presentation so like it is taking lots and lots of uh, uh, memory okay so to reduce it i used to create these stuffs i used to do it practically and afterwards i used to compress it and i'm trying to give it that is why like it is too fast sorry for that anyway like it will come back once again so that i can explain it once again to you okay do not worry so like as i told you like histogram of hash power so 50 the value of 50 is available almost a nine in nine cars we got 50 is a value and for 100 we got some 10 cars i guess okay so i'm trying to have an histogram of uh, the other column so this is how you are able to create your charts empty cars of <sighs> yes mpg miles per gallon okay over here like uh, the 15 is a value it's more I guess 15 is the value it's more so like it's trying to check it check the information from the data set plotting of density so accumulating the value and it is trying to give the density and try to plot it okay this is the density of data okay how much the data is like a uh, uh, like uh, it is interlinked that is your density I'm trying to plot it so to want to show the data so table of empty cars of gear so automatically the entry data is displayed as tables okay we have seen how to create histograms how to create plotting how to create a table now i'm trying to create a pie chart with a table created this is a pie chart i created with a table okay this is a pie chart you'll be having a lot of charts available 
So the, I'm trying to show you one kind of charts. So like uh, over here, I got my bar plots, the same data in the bar plot concepts. Okay, this is your bar plot. Okay, this is how you are able to create your charts. Now let's move on to the prediction analysis. So this is how, so I'm trying to create a histogram with empty gas of MPG with the breaks is equal to five in X axis, you give millions per gallon. Okay, so breaks is equal to five, segregating five and the main on the top, I want histogram of miles per gallon of cars. Okay, so like uh, this is the value, histogram of miles per gallon of cars. In the X axis, I got miles per gallon and here is a frequency and break into five pieces, group it into five pieces. Okay, so I want to group into five pieces yes uh maybe like uh, one second you'll count don't worry yes so now i'm trying to show plotting histogram now it's plotting so plotting of the same mpg okay and uh, as factor okay you got am so it is comparing analyzing it is analyzing with the factor am Okay, automatic or manual. So it is trying to predict it. Predict it. That is, yeah, it is a it is a prediction. So miles per gallon is damn good in this area when compared to this area. The over here, like uh, automated and manual. I'm trying to compare automated and manual. So millions million per gallon. So miles per gallon. Compare this data with automatic and like uh, your manual okay compare it okay so i tr try to create a chart plotting it i'm trying to fit it with a linear like a uh, linear like a uh, methodology okay linear methodology so like automated and manual with empty cast data and trying to create this summary if i try to map it miles per gallon is the data comparing this miles per gallon with the automated and manual to check out which one is better which one is better okay so yeah predictive analysis is done while doing the predictive analysis you are able to get the minimal value so this is your linear methodology your linear methodology your linear like a methodology algorithm is implemented Okay, once again, it's coming up. I'll try to show you. I'll try to explain it once again to you. The presentation is too fast. Sorry for that. This is how your predictive analysis and fitting an analysis is done. I'm trying to first create an histogram, break into five pieces, empty cars of miles per gallon, miles in the x-axis. In the main, try to give histogram of miles per gallon of cars. I'm able to see it. That's good. Now I got my histogram, so I'm trying to show you. That's good. Okay. Now let's move on to your plotting area. While plotting it, I want to have a plotting miles per gallon versus versus whether the engine is automatic or manual. Okay, that is that is how I'm going to plot it. So I'm creating a plot. This is the plotting output I'm getting. What is the plotting? Plot miles per gallon versus Take the factor of as dot factor is take the factor of empty cars of automated or manual. Take the column, compare this one. Where is the data set? Empty cars is a data set. <coughs> In the x axis, transmit type should be given. Y axis, you got your miles per gallon and you got your main. So, in the type it, like um, type it, you are able to miles per gallon in the x axis. So, y axis, x axis transmission type, compare it, shows that automated manual is there manual will be more manual is more okay now i'm trying to have this one fit it so i have seen it sir but i need to fit it right then only i'll get a summary of data i'm fit, i'm applying the algorithm data algorithm fit it yes i teach you so fit it so fit of zero fit zero is a one so like a linear methodology is the algorithm linear regression so mpg with the factor am data is empty cars summary you will be getting it so formula and data what is the minimal like a median 
first quartile, third quartile, maximum, what is the coefficient, intercept, as factor here, and significant codes, residual standard errors. Is there any errors? R square value, adjusted R square value, F statistics, P value, everything you are able to get it. Over here, AM. AM over here, seven point and one point here. Okay, so that is how you are able to predict it. Okay, sir, I want the miles per gallon should be lesser. I'll prefer this like a uh, automator. Manual, the miles per gallon is huge for you. Okay, this is how you are able to. So like now I can find, hey, like which one I can prefer. Whether I want a car with the uh, automator or whether I can go with the manual. Because it depends on the miles per gallon, I'm able to do some analysis. Okay, this is how you are able to do it. So this is how your data science world will be. Uh, I think uh, we are reaching the end of the session. And the entire video, the entire video which I'm presenting now, okay, in Tamil versions and English versions, it will be the, like the, on, under the topic, what is our programming and data science. So it will be available in this Wikitiki channel also, probably in uh, two or three days with the additional concepts. And I need to add a lot of things. I'll put it in this channel. You can take this video if you want. Okay, all these contents and everything will be in the video in this channel. And apart from this, like uh, I'm not sure whether you like uh, you send your WhatsApp message to me or not. Okay, this is the number. Send your WhatsApp message so that in future we'll be sending lots and lots of materials. So like uh, I didn't I didn't got the WhatsApp message from you people. So send the WhatsApp message to me. And uh, apart from that, if you got any doubts, you can send it uh, via this one. Uh, let me go back here. Can see the message here. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's time for me to say a goodbye to people. Like, uh, wait for my next session. That is going to be a very interesting session on classification, clustering, and we got a lot of things to see. Tada bye. So thanks for watching this program. So like uh, I'll give I will leave the screen for you people. So like uh, take your mobile, send your WhatsApp message to me uh, by like uh, typing your name, your college name, your department, and send data science material to this number with this particular number. And apart from that, I want to personally thank the organizers, Mr. Manoj, and uh, Mr. Uh, Syed uh, Mohammed, and a lot of people are there involved in this uh, program because organizing this kind of FDP for the entire India. Is the real toughest one. So all over India, more many professors from almost uh, almost I guess like almost from 150 to 200 college people are looking into this particular program, organizing this kind of program with uh, multi skills like yoga and a lot of things are there. I have seen it. Okay, so arranging like uh, identifying the best experts and uh, arranging this kind of program is the highest challenge. Okay, and I really appreciate you people like for organizing this program. Apart from that. Uh, uh, like uh, the other thing is like uh, today, 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 like uh, today, like I got a power cut. <laughs> today I got a power cut, and uh, like uh, I like immediately called uh, Manoj, Professor Manoj, and I told him like uh, the, like uh, like uh, the, there is a power cut, so I can't conduct the session immediately. And uh, he didn't hesitate. He didn't tell anything. One answer is like, sir, we can plan, no problem. I'll take care. That's awesome. That is organizing skill. So like uh, you you can't believe uh, Mr. Syed or Manoj every day they're sending a message reminding me no point in reminding man so I have committed to this program but they are taking responsibility that's awesome I really appreciate those people like uh, for their commitment in organizing this kind of biggest program for lots and lots of people and it is a social service program i really appreciate them and thanks for watching this session and i have to thank you people for <laughs> attending my session thank you thank you tata and uh, this is the one i leave the screen for you people so send a whatsapp message with your name your college and your department and uh, sharp two o'clock you are getting my best session on classification classing this is my area watch it so i'll leave the session for you people tata Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your presentation. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, dear ma participant. Hello, ma'am. I want to talk with uh, uh, Venkat, sir. Oh, just hello. Yes, please. Yes, Venkat, please, yeah. sir, good morning. Yeah, 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 please. 
Uh, so I'm Subhash Rathod, working as the head of department at MMIT Pune. So I went through your website. So there is a free internship for the students. So can the student apply right now and they will get uh, online internship kind of things? Sir, if you don't mind, like, can we have a call uh, later, sir? Like, uh, probably yeah, back. okay, sure. Thank you, sir. Yeah, sure. We'll call the, you, sir. The, Thank same, you. the Thank same you. number, sir. The same number shown in the yeah. screen. You you can yeah. contact the screen, sir. So apart yes, from that, like, uh, since since uh, Syed, sir, and a lot of people have told, like, uh, like uh, not to emphasize about my company. So that's why like, I didn't talk exactly. about my company. Okay. <laughs> uh, my company. Okay, uh, sorry, but, sir. But, but, uh, but it's, it's like, uh, I want to share you one thing, sir. Uh, the thing is like if any of you people if any of the people like if you're looking for your biggest career or like uh, you want to do a research on data science like uh, just contact me the reason is like uh, in the lockdown I am not sure like whether you know it or not in the lockdown like uh, professors HOD is from Andhra from almost some six to seven states they didn't uh, they didn't uh, waste their time they didn't sit in sit idle in home so they utilize the opportunity. They, they they contacted me. They have done lots of programs with us. Personally, they got trained on this data science, machine learning, and they are professors. They study. They learned cloud computing in my company. So my personal request, like, don't don't stay with the session which we are giving as a FTP. So go at not only Kashi Infotech anywhere. Just search for the technology, learn and build your profile. The reason is like if you are damn good in the profile, automatically the world is behind you. Anyway, thanks thanks for watching this program. You can contact me via this number. So the, the team will take the call and they will put a conference for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.